From the third baseman perspective, this is an exciting place to play. You're close to home plate, you have to have cat-like instincts, and the ball gets to you quick. So the one thing that you'll notice as a third baseman is that their ready position is much lower. Therefore, range is not a big factor for us. The big thing is efficiency. Routine ground balls, most of the time at third base, will be right at you. So you have a variety of picks for your footwork. I always want to make sure, no matter what footwork you use, that you provide a good sound base to where you can make an accurate throw to first base. Whether you choose to use a front foot lead in front of you, whether you choose to replace your feet, or whether you choose to use a left foot lead, it really doesn't matter. But it's important that you get your hips and shoulders aligned towards your target. One thing about third base play is since you're so close to home plate, it's very important that you take good angles on balls hit to your right and left. Our range as a third baseman is usually one step to our right and maybe one step to our left. So you have to become quick and efficient and be able to stay low to make that play because if you don't make the play, then obviously the ball is going into the outfield for a base hit. The other thing you're going to see about good third basemen is they're not scared to dive. They're not scared to get dirty. And so a couple of the principles that we need to talk about when we're going to our right would be making sure that we have a good crossover step. There's a couple of ways that most third basemen will cross over and protect the line. The first one is just a pivot and a crossover. Not a bad way to do it, but sometimes it's very difficult for you to get low in time by doing that. Another quick way, and a real efficient way, is to kind of take a jab step with your right foot back, which allows you to get lower. And if you ever try that, you take a jab step back, you're going to find it's much easier for you to get your glove down low to the ground, but you may not be as quick getting that ball that's a shot right down the line. Another key is taking a good angle. Obviously, the closer we get to home plate, the less range we have. I'm a firm believer that we always want to make sure that we take a deeper angle on a ball which gives us a better chance at reaching it. Same thing on a ball to our left. We want to use a good crossover step, but we want to set an angle so that we have the best chance of securing that ball. Let's look at the footwork. If I go to my backhand, it's a lot like that play at shortstop. If I secure the ball off my glove foot, then I'm going to have to get my right foot down as quick as I can to make that throw. It's very important that you try to get your right foot down as quick as you can and get your front side low so that you can stay on top of the ball. If you allow your momentum to go too much this way, what's going to happen is your shoulders are going to be up and you're going to have a tendency to launch the ball. Going to my left, most of the time we're going to be reaching for the ball and if we reach for the ball we got to find some way to get ourselves turned toward first base. The quickest way to do that is to drop this right foot back so that I can get my hips and shoulders turned. To review fielding a ground ball at third base. When going to the backhand side, take a crossover step. Secure the ball off of your glove hand foot. Step with your throwing hand foot and throw. When going to your glove hand side, take a crossover step. Secure the ball. Drop back your throwing hand foot and throw. One of the most important plays for a third baseman is fielding bunts. In the game of fast pitch softball, the short game is very important. Anytime you can field a bunt and throw a runner out at second base, you've really taken a lot of momentum away from the opposing team. We like our third basemen to think that every bunt that they field, they're going to set up and go to second base. So you have to make sure, number one, that you allow yourself to put your body in a position that you can make a good throw to second. And number two, you have to read the quality of the bunt. If the bunt bounces five times, then obviously you're not going to throw anyone out at second you're going to set yourself up to go to first. But if the bunt gets to you quickly, the one thing that we have to do as a third baseman to receive a bunt is to get our feet in a position 
where we're square or open toward the throw that we're going to make in that second base. The one nice thing about setting your angle toward second base is if you come up and you don't have a play at second, then you can make a nice easy adjustment and get the out at first base. One of the easier bunts to field as a third baseman is the ball to my glove hand side because this is the easiest for me to generate momentum toward my throw. In this case, I would go directly to the ball and as I go directly to the ball I'm moving toward first base so all I have to do is secure the ball and either replace my feet and throw or actually I can step with my right foot forward and throw. It's your choice. The ones that are difficult is the great drag bunt that catches you by surprise, the do or die play, or the bunt that's down the third base line. What makes this so difficult is if I try to field the ball down the third base line there's no way that I can get around that ball. I'm going to always take my body away from my throw. But there's one way you can feel that to allow yourself to gather some momentum toward first, and that's by using your backhand and raking the ball. Okay? As I approach this ball, this would be the ball that I'd want to go ahead and use my backhand because it allows me to set my feet toward first base, and now I can make a good strong throw. The sneaky bunt, or the drag bunt that catches you by surprise, this is where we're going to use that do or die play we talked about. You have no choice but to charge this ball very hard, and we're going to try to feel this ball on the run by securing the ball, stepping through it, and getting rid of the ball. Any time from third base that you're throwing to first on a do or die play, try to hit your first baseman on the infield side of the bag. And that's why it's very important to clear that front shoulder because if your ball tails into the baseline, you're going to have one nasty collision with your first baseman and the runner going down the line. To review fielding bunts at third base, when going to your glove hand side, secure the ball, replace your feet, and throw. When fielding a bunt down the third base line, field it to your backhand side. Rake through the ball, replace your feet, and throw. When fielding a drag bunt, field it do or die style on the run. Secure the ball, step through, and throw. Hey, from the third base perspective, when receiving throws from the outfield, again, we want to use our fundamental principles about tags. We want to try to keep the glove as close to the tag as possible. So footwork becomes important. If I'm going to receive a throw from left field, left center, or even center field, I can straddle the bag and I have enough clearance between the outfielder and the runner coming in to straddle the bag and to make the tag. The one that becomes difficult at third base is the ball to right field because a lot of times the ball and the runner arrive at the same time. This is one time that we want to, instead of straddling the bag, we want to move up in front of the bag, again, keeping our glove as close as possible, but this gives me a lane to work with to be able to make that tag. Too many times kids will straddle the bag on a ball hit to right field, and next thing you know, we've got the runner and the ball coming at the same time, and the ball gets by them. So by getting in front of the bag, I can make the tag, or I can actually move up if I need to, to get that throw that's a little wide and try to make a tag on the body. To review receiving throws from the outfield, straddle the bag, and keep your glove as close to the tag as possible. If the ball is coming from right field, move up in front of the bag, keeping your glove as close to the tag as possible. Our third baseman has responsibilities of being the relay person from left field to home plate. Now, the one thing that we have to consider is that we are a lot closer to home plate and it's a short throw than that middle infielder that was out in the outfield making a relay throw. So the footwork is a little bit different. We want to make sure that we have our third basemans. If I took an arc and drew from the pitching rubber to the line, we want them about that depth because we want our outfield to make the longer throw. The other thing that this allows is our catcher to have a little longer time to make a decision whether we want to cut the ball or not. A couple of key principles. Number one, you always want to keep the throw on your glove hand side. You never want to turn 
to your throwing side because it, you have to make a 360 degree turn to make your throw. So as we approach the ball or as the ball approaches us, the difference is that with the short throw, all we're going to do is take our right foot to the throw and we're going to pick it up, put it down, turn and throw. As you can see, that's a very simple footwork, but it's a very efficient one. The last thing that a catcher wants to see is our third baseman opening up and then shuffling toward them. That's a pretty scary sight. So we want a nice, short, quick throw. In order to do that, all we're going to do is take our right foot to the ball or right foot to the throw. If the throw takes me to my throwing side, I can step to my throwing side. I can open up and throw. If it's a good throw right at me, I can step to the ball with my throwing foot, turn and throw. To review relay throws, from left field to home plate, keep the throw on your glove hand side. Step to the ball with your throwing hand foot. Turn and throw.